Hello my soccer universe. We have the first group fully decided in group A and it is Germany winning it ahead of Switzerland. Hungary, the only team winning it in Scotland, sadly are out. Those are the bare facts. However, you know, it's never all that straightforward because uh, for quite a while it seemed like Switzerland are winning this group, while Hungary and Scotland both were very much on their way out already, at least with that late, late, late win. Hungary are keeping their hopes alive, although they are rather slim because goal difference might become an issue. For me, as always, it is there are two parallel games, so I cannot watch them both at the same time. Which one should I go for? I went for Scotland against Hungary because I thought there's more riding on that one. Boy, did I regret that decision. This was the worst game of the tournament so far, I would say. We'll talk about that, of course, in a little bit more detail after Jersey matchup bingo. Yesterday it was not that hard. I mean, we had Germany invite against Switzerland in red, Switzerland being the home team, of course. I'm more used to Switzerland playing with red shirt and white pants. I know the current kit has this darkish red, light red pants as well. So it was clear that Germany will play in all white, which is still kind of a weird look, but doesn't look that bad either. Scotland, of course, playing the home jerseys. So Hungary, for the third time this tournament, are playing in their white jerseys. Which is really odd if you <laughs> were to ask me. Especially since they decided against Switzerland to play not in the home jersey. So yeah, odd decision. Hungary liked their white jersey, seemingly. Although I think this one is nicer. But hey, that's a different story. But let's start with Scotland's game against Hungary. It was clear from the get-go. If Scotland wins this one, they have a really good chance of advancing. Four points usually takes you through even if you have a horrific goal difference. Alas, you know, you had Tierney out, you had Lewis Ferguson missing already for the tournament. So, you know, and then also other suspensions. The personnel for Scotland is rather thin. And for the most of the time you wondered, why are they not going more forward? Same thing for the Hungarians. But the Hungarians are, if anything, I would say a better footballing team again. Scotland can bring the fight. The Hungarians are a little bit finer, but they can also defend well. And they said, okay, Scott, we let Scotland come and we hit them on the counter attack because we think their defense is rather frail. And so it was just what we call in German Querpassfest, so sideway passing festival, if you would like, because the two teams did not attack each other. And if there was a chance, it more fell to Hungary. I think Scotland didn't have a real chance in the first half, maybe late on an errant shot or something like that. Did not really look good. The best thing about Scotland are the fans. I really gotta say it this way and I think especially the front line there is something missing for Scotland. Absolutely. I mean, he's just not up to that level of the Euros. I really gotta say. In the second half, more of the same until we had a free kick by Soboslai in the 70th minute and then was the scary moment of the evening where Angus Gunn is coming out and goes through Barnabas Varga who is just lying on the floor and the moment the camera pans onto him, he just did not look right. I mean, you don't lie like this. Uh, and you saw the Hungarian players quickly run, running and put, putting him in, on the side. You know, all the first aid stuff. They were really annoyed. And I was actually getting annoyed too that it was so slow, the medical support coming towards him because he clearly was hurt. And you need to clearly come quickly. But, you know, even the technical staff of Hungary that, that was there, they were just standing there most of the time. I really didn't feel this was rightly handled. In the end, we saw the blankets pull around him, at least from the Hungarian faces, it seemed like, yeah, it is scary, but they were more concerned about the health than about the life, what we've seen with Christian Eriksen. And so, yeah, it, he went off, he has a fracture under the eye socket, and he is conscious, but of course in terms of pain, and yeah, he'll probably be out for the tournament, should Hungary move on which they then eventually did because they got a late winner. But from that moment on, the game actually kicked you in the next game and became a little bit more frantic. Scotland were suddenly pushing for it. But whenever they're pushing, they're so open on the back that the Hungarians actually had better chances. It's always felt Scotland want to do it, but they don't have the skill to keep a ball. I also felt it kind of weird 
I assume it was because uh, the legs were missing that for instance someone like McGinn or Robertson had to come off. Those are few of the really good players. The biggest point of contention was when Armstrong was brought down in the box by Orban and while in play from the TV angle it may have looked like a penalty. When I saw the replay I said nah, I'm not sure this might be too little. So I actually thought this was okay and especially the referee I think was positioned quite well to see that both were pulling. Of course Scotland wants to have the penalty but honestly for me it was too little although I would have loved to see a Scottish penalty and in the end Scotland were pressing to try to get the win and Hungary did what they've done and it was especially Soboslai taking over the uh, game then because every time it was a counter he said give me the ball and it's exactly what happened he then got the ball in the 100th minute played it out to Shalai who crosses in and Joboth puts it into the net after he had hit the post earlier on as well and gives Hungary a win that just about gives them a chance of survival. Well, then you saw Sochla, of course, with the short jersey of Varga celebrating with the Hungarian fans. So it kind of ends well for now for the Hungarians. They get a win, but overall a disappointing campaign and they are really on the knife's edge whether they will qualify or not. Germany winning the group was also sort of on the knife's edge for quite a while. Because Switzerland held a lead for a long time. Yes, Germany surprisingly played the exact same lineup as they did in the previous two games. And while it may have been a surprise game, the circumstances and you know some players like Jordan Tahut and got a yellow card and is missing the next game. Nagelsmann has been communicating. This is my first 11. I still find it rather curious. Of course, I think it also played into Nagelsmann's decision that Switzerland is kind of a serious team and Switzerland definitely solid and needed to get at least a point out of this one to secure second spot and with a win they would have even won that group. Early on Germany went out and tried to get their goal and they seemingly got it through Andrich from a long range shot would have been a, quite a nice goal however there was a foul just before that by Musiala in the box and so it was not to be but Switzerland doing what Switzerland does being solid. Switzerland is one of those archetypically middle class European teams although on the upper edge of it because Switzerland have been really good over the years really really solid team very little exciting stuff but a lot of really good players playing solidly having a good defense especially with Jan Sommer on the back though Jan Sommer didn't look good on that Andrich shot all that much and then it was Ndoye who gave Switzerland the lead after a Freuler cross his first goal for Switzerland and it's 1-0 and Switzerland then, I don't want to say defending for the lives, but defending really, really well. Early on in the second half, Germany had a few chances. I think head of by Havertz even hit the top of the crossbar. So it was nervy at a while and you could see that maybe the whole excitement around this Germany team is being deflated because this inner confidence that most Germany fans have that, you know, we are one of the best teams in the world and we winning against Switzerland. That would have gone poof if Germany wouldn't have gotten a late equalizer. And it was actually then the substitute players that came on, that, you know, Raum, your Bias, your Sanes, and Fulkrug, and especially the latter one, where a Raum cross, Fulkrug heads it in. And it's 1 1, very late on. Germany win the group. They get away with one. Did they go all out playing? That's the question. Of course, they definitely didn't want to lose this one. I also think that Germany were looking kind of at the bracket and we'll look at it in a second where if we win the group, we most likely play Denmark. If we are second, we will most likely play Italy or Croatia in Berlin. Not sure if we want to have that. So there you go. So with the first group completed we can look at the projections you have Hungary moving up in that one everything else of course remained the same from before although you see the chances for Hungary qualifying right now at 60 percent depends on what Italy and Croatia will do largely I think that's the big one also of what Slovenia Serbia and Denmark will do because they also are on a very very low points total to stay behind Hungary at the moment they would be in third spot Gotta see how this pans out. The negative for Hung Hungary is the negative goal difference that they have. In the overall bracket, the only thing that changes is that now Hungary play against Portugal instead of Scotland. The, other than that, everything remains the same. Today, we finish up Group B and the game to watch is, of course, Croatia against Italy. Croatia need to win against Italy. Italy draws enough to qualify in second place. Albania have a really outside shot 
to actually grab a second space. However, in the best position is Italy. However, Croatia is the bogey team for Italy. They have never beaten them. Fortunate enough, they don't need to beat them. A draw is enough, although Italy will probably play more open. This is not the Italy that we are used to. So that will be the game that I'll be watching tonight. And then let's see what Albania and Spain will do. I expect many changes for Spain. So yeah, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday. Unfortunately, I have to say, although I would have loved to see Scotland move on just purely because of their fans, that we were just not good enough. Just not good, good enough. Even a relatively poor Hungary team was the better team. And that's a little bit sad to see because injuries and suspensions really undid Scotland in that one. Give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.